welcome to the Manor Born. Join us on our journey as we bring Moss New Manor back to life. As we might be getting the house ready for the summer, we still have a number of jobs that still need doing. I'll show you them. This is one. This needs doing. This needs doing. This wall. This window. Yep, got to do those. This window as well. And this is the Sarak room, not showed you yet, yet, but got to do this. So it's going to be rather a busy week. We do have quite a few things to finish off in the house. Now that I'm back from my tour, um, I've got quite a few things to do in the garden to get us summer ready. So the grass has been cut, um, but we've got to sort out the patio. I'm going to take all that white stuff off there and start planting some plants. And uh, we, we're going to start by putting the paddling pool up, our grandchildren, that will go there. And this area here around the barbecue is what we're going to put back into our sort of barbecue area. We're going to segregate this part of the garden when we design it. I'll tell you about that later on. And the trampoline will go over there. So let's get started. Last year when we brought the paddling pool, um, we realised that all the, the bits of stone or the uneven earth that's underneath it was slightly on the edge of the, uh, of the bottom of the swimming pool and sticking out a little bit. And we were worried that when people jump in and out of the pool, it might crack the bottom of it. So um, we looked at online some rubber matting um, that you could put underneath the pool. And really it was quite expensive for very, very small thin bits of foam. Then Jules remembered that we have all of this packing material still in the garage from our shipping. So I've put some bubble wrap on the floor, a layer of cardboard, and then I'm going to place on the top of it some more bubble wrap and then this can be the base of the pool. And oddly, this will be thicker than the foam matting that you can buy in the shops. So some areas of France are currently under a bit of a hose pipe ban. We're quite lucky at the moment because we're not under hose pipe ban, um, but also we have a well on our property. So we're filling our pool with the well. I've checked this all out the mayor, it's perfectly okay. Um, certainly areas of France at the moment, if you do have a pool, you can top it up with a well, but I've double checked that I can fill my pool with the well. So that, that's why we're doing this today. The pool is now up. You can also hear the church bells. It's Sunday and that's the uh, end of the service. All we've got to do now is hoover it and then fill it. And the reason I'm hoovering it is because although we put it in the garage nice and tidily, it seems to be absolutely full of leaves. also attached um, a two-way pump. It comes uh, out there through the filter there and then back through a range of pipes back into the pool. You can see there the exit hole and the entrance hole for the water so that keeps the water reasonably clean throughout the summer. Things I need to do this year is to build a little housing unit for this. I'm going to attach it to the wall over there um, because last year I just had to have plastic boxes on it because of all the electricity and everything. It just wasn't perfect. There was hardly any rain last summer but it's not good enough for a long term. So that'll be a project for another couple of weeks. This is how we're going to fill our pump. So our property came with a really gorgeous well. It's really quite deep. It's about seven or eight meters deep, I think. Um, and it's full of water right now. So we're going to take the lid off, pull that hose pipe out, get the pump going and fill the pool. And hopefully without dropping the video camera. There we go. The well is now pumping nicely into the pool over there. And it begins. It takes about four hours to fill this pool. And then stop filling the pool because there's a thunderstorm broaching above us. And whilst we do have this old outside uh, plug, obviously the, the cover is missing. It's something we need to repair. I've had to turn that off because it doesn't have a cover, which means I'm using extension lead to do the pump. And during a thunderstorm, I really don't want that happening. So we'll have to refill the pool tomorrow. A change of clothes, because Julie quite rightly pointed out I was wearing a white top to do the swimming pool. We now are going to tackle the trampoline. Here it is in bits, and it's going to go roughly there.
trampoline up, the next thing we've got to tackle is the barbecue area. Now this barbecue was here when we arrived. It's right in the middle of where our herbaceous board is going to be. That's going to be a bed um, there. There's going to be a herbaceous border there. We were going to put a bed down here and we, we tried prior to COVID putting um, a bed in here and then covering it with some bash to stop things growing. And what actually happened is grass then grew on top of it, which has caused us a huge issue. We've got to dig all that out because you can see that's uh, the lawnmower is attacking the bits of bash. But this area here is going to be the barbecue area. We're going to separate bits of the garden. Um, so that bed we're going to do next week, hopefully. And then this area here will have some planters going round there making a small little tiny area for barbecue and um, so it won't look too bad. We had talked about moving the barbecue. Um, it's lovely barbecue actually, it draws really really well but there's a few cracks in it where it's quite old and we're just concerned that if we move it it's just going to fall apart. But either way it's a good barbecue and we now need to bring it back to life having had the since last August um, with unused and then nature slowly returning it to its own. The storm has meant that we haven't been able to use the barbecue either today, so nothing's going according to plan. You can see it sat there in the corner without any flames in it. But uh, I will show you a picture of what it looked like last summer, and we uh, discovered the amazing thing about cooking melons on a barbecue. It tasted rather nice. <laughs> One of the most amazing things I love about living in a village community. A friend of ours just knocked on the door and said, would you like this lovely old, probably 1970s fondue set? Of course, we said yes. Um, so today we're going to use it and make a fondue. <music> Sort of air control valve here, and when we do need to turn it off, we literally just put that over the top and it cuts all the air out and extinguishes the fire. And with the main fondue pot on the top, the final image. <laughs> One of the areas we've yet to share with you is the old servant's quarters or the chambre domestique and it's our uh, seat. This is this sort of garden area and uh, we'll take you inside. So this is the kitchen area, um, sink, cooker oven obviously and then we have the lounge and the lounge has a uh, lovely log burner there. Um, that table there opens up, it's full of games. Uh, we've got that Knoll sofa, um, designed from uh, a sofa that was in Knoll House by Henry VIII. Um, that was on Facebook, that was that 400 euros, really quite nicely. Some of the pictures on the walls, um, because it's a, a Breton cottage, we had some postcards enlarged and I had them all framed. Um, so they're, they're representing some of the original um, people that lived in this area. Um, and then above the fireplace, we've got a traditional Breton lady made out of, uh, of metal there. Um, and that carving came from somebody else's cottage. They hung over the fireplace and they gave it to us. Little wood carving of some hunters. We thought it'd be quite nice to keep on this in this cottage. This uh, 
mantelpiece has been made. Also, we got the brackets in a, in a local ironmongers. And this, again, was another piece of, of the wooden wall that went through the, the house, yeah, the cottage here. Yeah. Um, in the fireplace itself, this pan behind the chimney piece there, that's a galette pan. Um, that would have been used originally when this um, was a, uh, a range. It was put on the range to make galettes. It's completely dreadfully rusty, but we've left it there because it was there like that when we came into the house. And this long handle pan here with holes in the bottom, that's for cooking walnuts. And you can roast walnuts or chestnuts over the open fire. And these pans here that were given to us by a local friend. Leads into the bathroom. And as you can see, <laughs> this is where we haven't quite finished. So we've got the bathroom here. You can see there the depth of the window, uh, the wall, sorry, towards the window. Um, there will eventually be a different toilet in there that will have a, a top level system, a very office system. But quite a few things to do in this, We've including, as you see there, we've got the, the covers of all the plugs and things and the light switches aren't finished. Uh, washing machine, tumble dryer will eventually go there. That's just a water boiler, some paintwork to finish. And then uh, covered on the stairs. And then as we go upstairs, This is a officially sort of a one bedroomed property. We have a four poster bed that we put in. So um, we have a writing desk and there's some things we need to finish. This is going to be a dressing room. We need to put a, uh, a door on there. It'll eventually have um, rails and it'll have various bits and pieces to put suitcases. That's uh, bits of bedding we've got stored up in bags there. And then in here, I've got to build a door, a door frame, and we've got to put a bathroom in here as well. So there'll be a sink there, um, toilet and shower. So we've got the bits and pieces for that. We just need to start repairing them. And what we're going to do today is that bit of wood there. We've got to take it upstairs because that is a day bed. We'll take it upstairs now. was actually our daughter's bed for about four or five years. Where we lived in Borneo, um, it was cheaper to buy an Indonesian teak wood bed than it was to buy a single bed. So we draped some curtains around it and our daughter enjoyed this as a four-posted single bed for quite some time. This little desk here, that's actually a card table. Um, we can use that for bridge and things like that stuff. So I lift it up. It's got a lovely bays inside and it pulls out. The legs move side backwards. It makes a nice card table. We've got another one in the hallway of the main house. For the fondue this evening, I'm going to make a very traditional Savoyard fondue. Um, we have three cheeses. We have a Comte, a Buffot, um, and we're meant to have a Rebouchelon or a Beauchelon but I couldn't find the supermarket, so I've gone for a Savillard, which is like um, a nutty cheese. I could have used a brie or, or um, a camembert or something, but I've got three cheeses here, and we're gonna add um, two and a half cups of wine. We're gonna add some cornflour to that. Uh, there's about 200 grams of this, by the way. We're gonna add all that together, and we're going to cook it into a fondue. Our pan on the side. I'm going to rub the pan with garlic. We're not going to keep the garlic in the pan. We just want the oils of the garlic to go into the pan. And we're going to add the wine until we start mixing. Oh. I have roughly chopped the cheese, added it to the pan, and we'll slowly melt the cheese. Like I said, we're not going to boil this. We're just going to slowly heat it. You can see the cheese is suitably melted. We're now going to add to it some paprika, some pepper, and some nutmeg. Put that in there. Give it a stir. We've decided to forego a tablecloth this evening because we've been through too much cheese everywhere. Um, 
we have some ham, two different types of bread. We have some lovely gherkins and some onions over there. We did realize that once we were given the set, nobody had given us anything to, to use, some proper fondue forks, so we've just used here some large skewers. Whilst you might be thinking that a fondue is more Swiss than French, it's sort of owned by both countries. In fact, the word fondue comes from the French verb fondre, to mean to melt or to be melted. Yep, and whilst we do have a lot of projects to do in the house, we need to get the garden ready because we've got lots of people coming to stay and uh, this is the only time to do it. Throughout the next two weeks, I will be tackling every single unfinished project before we start on anything more. We have quite a lot planned for this summer. Um, we've got a lot of people coming and uh, we can sort of fit uh, the renovations in between all of our guests.